boys and girls, it's Aunt Suki here. Welcome to Aunt Suki's History Stories for Children. Once upon a time, there was a town called Murgatroyd. Oh, yes, there was. And there was a paper doll factory. And lots of people worked there making paper dolls. And then this sick, evil, twisted, horrible, dreadful person called Apronhead came along and burned down and destroyed the paper doll factory. But one paper doll, a living, walking, talking paper doll named Flashy, escaped because her kind creator, Dr. Getrick, had gotten her out of the factory before it went up in flames, just like most of Murgatroyd did a long time after that. And so, boys and girls, Flashy was walking around a living, walking, talking paper doll. But then this evil, dreadful, sick, twisted clown named Bangledy Boop, who claimed to be Apronhead's father, started chasing Flashy around, trying to destroy her. First he went after her with scissors. Then he went after her with a staple gun. But Flashy kept getting away, and she kept getting away. And finally, the clown just gave up in despair and disgust and hung himself from the Statue of Liberace in Dead Center Park. He committed suicide, just like his son Apronhead, doing the world a big favor and making the world a much nicer place. And that was our first history story for children, boys and girls. Talk she. Recorded live. Hi, boys and girls at the elementary school. This is the local artist, Blackson. Can you say Blackson? I want all of you to get out your little notepads and your crayons and your pencils. And I'm going to go over here to the blackboard and I'm going to write my name. Blackson. B-A-L-T-S-O-N. And I want all of you boys and girls to write down... Blackson is the greatest artist who ever lived. Can you do that? Do that for me. Yes. That's a good little boy and girl. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. When I was a little boy, I used to draw all kinds of little pictures. Oh, yes, I did. And then I grew up to be a big, famous artist until this vile, equid, terrible, awful, evil, sick, perverted, twisted woman named Timotin Fokowski decided to start criticizing and attacking my art. Yes, boys and girls, if you see Timotin Fokowski on the flat screen or the TV screen or the computer that Mommy and Daddy is watching at night, I want you to go and change the channel. Either that or start wailing and crying and screaming and get down on the floor and kick and throw a big temper tantrum until they change the channel and get it off of that terrible, wicked, awful Imogene Slikowski. Yes, boys and girls, she's terrible, but I'm great and I am wonderful, and I want all of you to grow up to be successful, meaningful people, and not vile and wicked, terrible people like Imogene Slikowski. This is Blatson the Artist, and I was invited to come and lecture you here today about art. And yes, we're going to talk about all kinds of art, boys and girls. Hello, boys and girls. It's Aunt Suki here. And not only can you kids hear us, as we do this wonderful Aunt Suki's history lessons for children. But children all over the world, due to the magic of the Internet, can now see this history lesson about Murgatroyd. This morning, kiddos, we're going to talk about the Murgatroyd serial killer. 
Yes, many years ago, this weird, creepy, strange character started killing innocent young women all over Murgatroyd. And Lieutenant Skitters couldn't catch him, and never could catch him. And then, finally, this terrible, evil serial killer set Murgatroyd on fire. He went all over town setting buildings on fire. And then this skateboarder named Kimmy, not much older than you boys and girls, who had been kidnapped by the Murgatroyd serial killer, he suddenly watched this serial killer burn to death, and he escaped. At least that's the official story that we're told whenever he was had the metal pinned on him by Senator Devane. So, the Murgatroyd serial killer is dead, kids. And you can celebrate. And that was Aunt Suki's history lessons for children. Goodbye. Hello, boys and girls. Aunt Suki's History Stories for Children was brought to you by Drifty's Super Deluxe Ultra Burgers. When you get home from school, set up a haul for Mommy and Daddy to take the whole family to Drifty's tonight for the Super Ultra Deluxe Triple, Triple, Triple and be sure to order Triple, Triple, Triple French Fries and a Triple, Triple, Triple Iced Cold Ultra Deluxe Soft Drink. Come to Drifties tonight. Hello, boys and girls. It's Aunt Suki 3. I'm the third Aunt. Suki, Uncle Frank had clones of himself and the original Aunt Suki made so that when they died, the great tradition could continue for history stories for children by Aunt Suki. And as you know, boys and girls, today it is April 1st. 2074. And today, boys and girls, we are studying the great hero, Timothy Lawrenson. And Timothy was a teenage skateboarder. Oh, yes, he was. And he traveled back in time. Through the time, energy flux filled. Back in time, through the time, energy flux field created by Dr. Derrickson. First, Timmy went back to 1659 and warned Flashy the Paper Doll about the religious fundamentalist fanatics next door in Flat Town who were going to massacre them by burning them all at the stake. Boys and girls, can you say religious fundamentalist fanatics? That's great. So Timmy saved them, and then he traveled to 2071 to our wonderful world ruled by paper dolls. Then he went back to 2016 and was threatened by the evil Senator Devane who was a flunky for the evil Count Pedestrian, who was planning to take over the world and become dictator. So Timmy tried to travel back to 2015 to prevent Senator Quint from being assassinated. But instead, he landed in 2051 during the evil King Pedestrian's war against the Paper Dolls. And Timmy landed at the sub-palace of King Pedestrian III, right here in Murgatroyd, and overheard the evil King planning to drop thermonuclear bombs all over the world 
to annihilate the paper dolls. So Timmy grabbed a gun from one of the king's guards and shot and killed the evil king pedestrian, thus saving the world from destruction. So Timmy is our hero, and now, here in 2074, paper dolls and humans live together in a world ruled by paper dolls. And there is a statue of Timmy the skateboarder right in the middle of Dead Center Park. And that was today's history lesson, boys and girls. This has been Aunt Suki 3. Goodbye. Welcome to Murgatroyd City in an alternate reality, a parallel universe very similar to our own universe, but where persons have very different lives and different personalities. Skateboarder Timothy Lawrence Sun has stumbled into this alternate universe through the energy time flux field, and he is fascinated and startled by the many differences. Well, precious darling little girls. It is Mother Suki of the Divine Goddess Church of Little Girls. Yes, the Divine Goddess created all of you little girls in her image. Yes, so you can all grow up to be goddesses for little boys. Just like the great Fashion model and CEO of Dentini Cosmetics, Flashy the Paper Doll. Flashy is the goddess too. She was created in the Divine Goddess's image. So I want all of you little girls to get out your little lipstick and get out your little compact and get out your little face powder. Let's get out our little mascara and do our lashes. <gasps> oh, yes, we want to look so divine. We want to be goddesses for those young men so we can dazzle them as goddesses. Remember, women are divine. Women are divine goddesses. And this has been Mother Suki of the Divine Goddess Church for Little Girls. Goodbye. To Murgatroyd's Live Theater, the incredible spectacular production written, created and produced by Aunt Suki, the new country and western satire, the phantom of the well, old. I want to be an opera singer and sing for everyone. The sing of your songs looks like it would be a lot of fun. Hey, they call that man the Phantom of the Opry. He can take a girl and teach her how to sing. It might wear a hat and a mask and swing around on a rope, but he don't drink, he don't smoke, and he sure
sure or don't do no dope. Yeah, they call that man the Phantom of the Opera, and he can teach a girl how to sing. He can teach a girl how to carry a tune. He can teach a girl how to sing. And they call him the Phantom of the Opera. He can make all the bells ring. They call him the Phantom of the Opera. He can make all the bells ring. True Confessions, the show where you call and unreveal the ugliest, dirtiest, meanest thing you ever did in your life to another human being. You may want to remain anonymous on this voice, and voice disguising technology will be provided upon request. Only the truth here on this show tonight, the no holds bared, raw, naked, Brutal truth revealed right here on Ugly Truth Confessions. Yeah, this is Aunt Sue. I just felt like getting something off my chest. You know, this happened a couple of years ago. Um, Back when Uncle Frank would go off across the river to the tavern and get drunk as a skunk and then come driving home at three o'clock in the morning and all, you know. Anyway, I had Uncle Frank's teeth. And was he ever mad? He really got mad. He sure got mad. You know why I hid Uncle Frank's teeth? Because he went across the river and got drunk. That's my true confession for tonight. This has been Aunt Suki. Goodbye. Bring that old foot back here for. I asked you to get rid of it. Now don't bring it in the house. Don't bring it in the house. Put it out in the backyard or something if you're going to keep it. But don't bring it in the house. I wish you'd throw that old foot away. Well, now, I didn't see if you listened to me. When I went out there to the biotech lab, the whole daggum place was surrounded from half a mile back by the Secret Service and the FBI and the police and I don't know what all. And I wasn't about to go off in there with this football. They had the place under lockdown like that. <clears throat> now, I could have thrown this old foot out the window, and, and the, but it's flashy foot. And so we'll just keep it in the backyard and see what happens. And I believe it's grown a little since we got it. She did now full-size foot, and you can see part of her ankle sticking up there, and it's still moving a little bit. So I, I don't know what's going on with it, but if we just keep it out there in the backyard, it ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt me. It ain't going to bother nobody. And we live far enough for the neighbors, unless they've got a damn pair of binoculars, they ain't going to see that foot anyway. 
Now, what we got to hope some wild animal, of course, don't get out there and get a hold of that foot. But uh, I imagine it can kick or move or whatever if that was to happen. But anyway, I'll just stick it out in the backyard. I don't think the chickens will mess with it. Hell, they'll probably run from it. Anyhow, I'm going to keep it until all this blows over, and then I might just mail it to the biotech lab anonymously or something. All righty. Thank you. Paper doll legs out there in the backyard. 
Hope them legs don't grow into a full size flesh. I hate to see what you got to do then. Anyhow, I'm just, I'm watching you. You just remember that, Uncle Frank. I'm watching you. That's it. You got it? Now, I ain't spooky. We've been married for 50 years. I can't believe you'd be jealous of a dead gun fever doll. And, and by the way, it ain't just legs out there now. You was right. She done growed into a full-size fleshy. I don't know what we're going to do with her. She started talking up a storm last night, and I said, well, you're free to go and leave anytime you want to. I don't know what paper dolls eat, but we ain't got anything here around the house for you. And of course, the cat and the dog ain't paying no attention to her, and the chickens are scared of her. And I, I imagine she'll just wander off back to the biotech lab. And to begin with, she seemed to remember who she was. She said, I'm flashy the paper doll, and this and that and all. And I just put her and turned around and came back in the house, you know. There wasn't nothing else I could do. I ain't trying to fool with that old biotech lab, you know, after the other day when I went down there and they surrounded by the feds and everything else. So I'm just uh, hoping the neighbors don't see her out there in the backyard. I'm hoping she just takes off and wanders off, and I expect that to imagine what that's what's going to happen, you know. So don't get upset, ain't you, Ken? Get over your little jealousy bit, all right? Thank you. They say that I am certain... This is Hugh Miller's son at CRZY and we interrupt today's episode of Heart's Desire to take you alive to the Senate hearings and to the energy time flux device. Senator Devane has both flashy the paper doll and Dr. Jacqueline Reeb somewhere appearing before the committee today and he will be asking both of them questions as he further continues his probe into the energy time flux device. And we join the alive coverage now as it is taking place in Washington, D.C. And Senator Devane is about to begin questioning Well, them. well, well, Dr. Jacqueline Reed Summer. I've uncovered your little chamber of horrors down there at the biotech lab. The authorities searching the place found records where you brought Eric Niedermeyer back to life. The Murgatroyd serial killer, you and Dr. Yetrick with your little Frankenstein experiments, brought a cold-blooded mass serial killer back to life. And now he's killed Blacks and the artists over there in France. Lieutenant Skinner's for murder Croyd on his way over there now. I ought to hold you on any charge we can come up with. And that paper doll there, now I got plans for her, too. So what you got to say for yourself, Dr. Jacqueline Reed Sommer, bringing a serial killer back to life and turning him on the loose? I wish Dr. Gatrick was here now. I'm going to have his side once I get a hold of him.
future and giving birth to twins who are now two years old, Flashy 3, the duplicate paper doll which grew from the original Flashy's severed foot, has made the decision to enter the energy time flux field and travel back to the year 2016 so that she can introduce the twins to their human father, Uncle Frank, in the woods near Flat Town well, outside of well, Murgatroyd's. Well, well, kiddos, we are in the woods between Murgatroyd and Flat Town. Soon we will be at Uncle Frank's house. I grew up in Uncle Frank's backyard, and I mean that literally, kids. Oh, look, look there's his house. Twins, you are about to meet your father. Look, he's oh, outside oh, right now. Oh, oh, my goodness. That's you, Flashy Three, isn't it? Well, I'll be doggone. And looky there, you got a couple of kids there with you and all. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. They look just like me. You mean I'm a daddy? Well, Flashy Three, if there's anything I can do for you, say there's how they're my kids and all. But you just. Let me know, and I'll, and I'll be glad to help take care of them and all, you know. Can they talk? Have they started talking? Why, yes. Yes. Yes, Uncle Frank. They can say two words. The same two words you use to say all the time. Here. Just listen to them. Talk to your daddy, twins. Talk to your daddy. Go ahead. Show him you can talk. Show Thank him you. you can talk. Thank you.